I would suggest uh, starting the presentation uh, uh, and feel free to ask questions during the presentation because we'll have some points where we stop to answer these questions and we'll have, uh, I guess, about five such uh, points. So today I will talk about uh, uh, how to make synchronization primitives like mutexes or semaphores or something else that can be uh, fast and at the same time fair. And uh, first of all, this is a slide about uh, myself. So as uh, uh, Vitaly and Miti mentioned, I work as a researcher in the uh, Kotlin team at the JetBrains, and I'm also getting PGD. And at the same time, I teach a course on concurrent programming at uh, Itmo University. And uh, I would say that I have some experience uh, in concurrency. And what I do understand almost every day is that concurrent programming is really hard. I would be happy to say that uh, with ES it becomes easy and easy to program, to program your uh, concurrent algorithms. But actually that's not true. I, uh, <laughs> Uh, the real thing is that uh, uh, it's easier to avoid concurrency. So you can use coroutines when you use Kotlin or you use uh, Java with the Project Loom or Go language. Sometimes uh, we can use software or hardware transactional memory to avoid concurrency and write sequential code. But uh, if you need to implement all these primitives, then you can't avoid concurrency. And uh, sometimes you spend hours or even days trying to find a bug which produces uh, quite rare and uh, it's really hard. And that's why uh, people do use synchronization primitives. And in your real project, if you can use Mutex uh, to guarantee correctness, then please use it and, uh, <coughs> and sleep better. Uh, however, sometimes uh, you need to implement such primitives. And uh, for example, in the uh, Kotlin quarantines, we also need to provide them. And uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will give you uh, uh, some intuition on uh, how some of these primitives are organized. And first of all, I would like to uh, spend a couple of minutes uh, on uh, two basic primitives, on logs and uh, semaphores, uh, to remind uh, their uh, properties. And uh, log, also known as mutex, uh, is a basic primitive in concurrent programming. This primitive uh, uh, allows you to, to guarantee that uh, at most one thread can be in the critical section. So that if you have uh, the following code, when you have a global mutex M and you have two threads, we, the critical sections and these critical sections, uh, they're now executed in parallel. But when you wrap them with the lock and unlock operations, you guarantee that these critical sections will be executed sequentially. So that when you invoke this code, uh, one of these threads uh, acquires the log, and another one should wait for a log. And here, the, uh, the thread on the left acquires the log, the, the thread on the right uh, waits on this log, so that, first of all, the critical section of the first thread is executed, and when unlock function is invoked, it re resumes the second thread so that it uh, transfers the log permit to it. And the second thread now is allowed to execute its critical section. And uh, semaphore is uh, a kind of generalization of log. So log uh, or mutex, uh, it guarantees that at most one thread can be in the critical section, while semaphore guarantees that at most key threads can be in the critical section. And uh, when we have only one permit in semaphore, then it's exactly our mutex. And uh, that's how uh, the project I'm going to talk about now was uh, started. We wanted in Kotlin coroutines to create uh, a fast uh, semaphore algorithm, which we of course use for both uh, uh, logs and semaphores. Uh, and before talking about uh, algorithms, uh, we need some uh, 
some model for blocking operations. So in Mutex or in Semaphore, the operation that acquires the lock or acquires the permit, it's blocking by design. Because if there is no permit in Semaphore, you need to wait for it. So that this acquire operation, uh, it can be blocked for some time until the Semaphore is released. Uh, and there are different ways to model such blocking uh, operations, and we need some abstraction that can be easily applied to uh, all the real models we have. So when we, you work with threads like in Java or with coroutines or continuations uh, like in uh, Kotlin, uh, we need to some abstraction that can be applied anywhere so that our work uh, uh, can be applied uh, in any language as well. And uh, one of the simplest way to model uh, blocking primitives is determining future if the operation is blocking. And uh, on this future, you can invoke await function, and this await function actually blocks. However, when you return this future, so the operation that returns the future, it's, it can be non-blocking, so that we can talk about progress guarantees, and uh, the only uh, place uh, where we can block is this await function. Uh, so that we have different implementations of uh, uh, this future. So, for example, when we don't need to block, we return special future immediate implementation so that we complete immediately. We don't need to wait, we already have result, and in a wait function, we simply return this result. However, if we need to wait, we have to suspend, then we return future suspended. And in this future suspended, we have additional uh, function complete. So that in a wait, we, we have a, a loop, while loop, where we spin until the state is not null, and it's null initially. This means that there is uh, no value right now. And when somebody invokes complete, then it stores this uh, uh, value to the state and awaits returns this value. That's where we are blocking. Of course, in the real world, we don't use such uh, while loops. Uh, we if we work with threads, we can park them, and if we work with the continuations, we can also do some uh, similar stuff. But anyway, uh, these features suspended can be implemented easily in any model. So uh, the state machine for this future suspended is, is extremely simple now. We have the initial state waiting, and once the uh, future is completed, it is uh, moved to the resumed state. And later we will uh, uh, make this uh, state machine more complicated and we won't uh, look at the code, we will just change the state machine and assume that all the transitions are atomic. So, about semaphore. We'll talk about semaphore first of all because semaphore uh, can be uh, used for mutexes as well. And uh, at the end of the talk, I will show you how to build other primitives, uh, 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 not only semaphore. And as for semaphore, as we discussed, this blocking operation acquire, it can't return unit, it should return future. So it's blocking. And uh, in our algorithm, it will return future, and on this future, we will suspend. So let's try to create some simple semaphore algorithm that should uh, work in concurrent environment. Uh, the easiest way, I see, is to have a count of uh, available permits so that uh, uh, if it is positive, it stores the number of permits that can be, uh, uh, that can be taken from this semaphore right now. And uh, the idea is pretty simple. You have two functions, you have acquire and you have release. And at the beginning of acquire, you decrement the number of permits because you try to acquire this permit. And when you release permit, you increment this counter. And it may happen that uh, uh, when you work a lot of acquire, then this permits count can become negative. And if it is negative, it shows how many waiters we have on this semaphore. 
So the algorithm is pretty simple. First of all, as we discussed, in the choir, we decrement the number of permits. And if it was greater than zero, then we just got this permit. So we don't need to do anything else. We can complete, the, and in this case, we return future immediate. However, if there was no available permit in this semaphore, we should suspend, we should wait until this permit is available. And this suspend function we use now, it creates a new future suspended and uh, puts it uh, into the waiting queue and returns it. And at the same time, when we walk, walk release, we increment the number of permits. And we check whether there is a waiter on this semaphore. If not, we return immediately. However, if there is a waiter, if the count was negative, then we have to resume the first one uh, and complete it. That's what our resume function uh, does. Uh, so I hope uh, everything is clear here. Expect for the, these suspend and resume functions. And let's uh, uh, let's look uh, deeper on how these functions uh, can work. How uh, can we organize this waiting queue? And the model is pretty simple. Uh, we just have an infinite array. We will we will deal with the, this infinite array implementation later. Uh, and we have two counters. We have counter NQ index uh, to add new uh, waiters, and we have counter DQ index uh, uh, to retrieve waiters. So that when we suspend, we create a new future suspended, we, we increment NQ index so that uh, we know the index of the, uh, of the first empty cell, and we put this future into the cell. At the same time, uh, so that's what we did now. And at the same time, uh, in resume, uh, we do the opposite thing. We increment the count of DQ index in order to retrieve uh, the first future. And after that, we retrieve it and complete it. So the logic is pretty simple. And uh, the cell life cycle uh, can be shown with this diagram. So initially the state is empty and when suspend comes, it stores a future into the cell. And after that, resume comes, it resumes the future. And uh, after the future is resumed, we replace it with a special mark resumed. We do this because we need to avoid memory leaks in practice. Uh, these futures in practice can be continuations or threads. And uh, once they are resumed, we, uh, we have not to store them in our uh, 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 synchronizer primitive. Uh, and uh, we remember that uh, in a semaphore, we first of all, increment uh, or decrement the premise counter. So we increment it on releases and decrement it on acquires. And uh, only after that we invoke uh, suspend or resume functions. And it can be possible then that resume comes to the cell which is empty. So we know that there is a choir which should be suspended here, but uh, the suspend is not invoked yet. So that resume can come and find the cell in the empty state. What should it do in this case? And since we know that uh, uh, there is a suspend, concurrent suspension, that should come to this cell eventually, or not just eventually, but almost right now, then we can simply put the value put our permit into the cell. And once uh, uh, suspend uh, comes, it grabs the permit so that it even doesn't need to suspend. Okay? So in this case, we perform some kind of elimination. So re resume comes before suspend, it uh, puts uh, the value into the cell and uh, suspend grabs this value. So it, it's uh, uh, similar to parking and unparking mechanism for threads. When you invoke uh, unpark before park, it is guaranteed that uh, uh, in this case, uh, on park invocation, you don't, uh, you, you won't be parked. Uh, 
and uh, the only thing which is unclear now is uh, how to build this infinite array infinite array of cells and uh, even in sequential environment we don't have such a primitive and of course it's much harder to uh, implement it in concurrent one However, here we don't need random access. We uh, access uh, all our cells sequentially so that we can uh, use a, a linked list of uh, segments uh, as an implementation of our infinite array. So, so here we have segments of fixed number of cells and each segment has its unique ID. So all the segments are ordered by their IDs. And when we need to go to cell I, we do know that, uh, which segment we need and to which cell in this segment we need. So, so that we can always find it. And uh, uh, with this structure, the implementation is the following. First of all, in suspend, we, we know that we need to add a new weight new feature suspended. Then we read the tail pointer at first and in, only after that we increment NQ index. And when we read the tail pointer, we know that the segment we need, uh, the segment we will need will be either this tail or it will be somewhere right. So uh, after the increment, we do know the cell number, we do know which segment we need, and we can find it following by next pointers. And of course, at the end, we need to adjust the tail uh, pointer because we, uh, we don't need all this previous segments, so we move it forward. And the resume function works uh, similarly. The only difference is that it uh, works with the head instead of tail. So it is head pointer, it increments uh, DQ index, and uh, after that, it's, it finds uh, the required segment and uh, adjusts uh, the head point uh, uh, accordingly. That's how we can simulate infinite array for our purpose. And uh, uh, I would like now to remind you how the SEMA for uh, algorithm looks. So in this same algorithm, we already discussed, in a query we decrement the number of permits, and uh, if it was positive, it means that we got this permit, we can return immediately, and if it was uh, negative for zero, then uh, there is no permit available, and we go uh, to spend. And in the release function, we uh, increment the number of permit because we release this permit, we check whether the, there is a waiter on this semaphore and if there is a waiter we invoke resume to resume the first waiter and uh, i think that uh, here's a good point to stop uh, for uh, answering on uh, your questions dimitri yes so please don't be shy <laughs> And uh, I will uh, just ask uh, uh, you to clarify the FAA, FAA operation because it's not common used, I believe. Uh, could what is to stand for it? Uh, just clarify what's the FAA. Oh, so, sorry, to sorry. All our FAA. listeners to know. F and A is the fetch and operation uh, that uh, atomically increments the counter. Okay, and uh, uh, I just need to clarify uh, what you will do if uh, the user of a semaphore will uh, use more releases when acquire. That's just a great question. In the, in the, for example. Uh, so it's a really great question because usually uh, when we create a new semaphore, with the specific number of permits, when we in uh, and we invoke reason, it this release should fail. And uh, here we 
we don't perform any check. So we see that we can invoke release uh, as many times as we want so that uh, when we create semaphore with the one permit and we think that this is mutex, we can invoke release uh, five times and now we have semaphore with the six permits. And in order uh, not to have uh, uh, such a inconsistency, we can, uh, in release, we can check uh, that we are not in incrementing the count too much, but in this case, uh, we should uh, perform this increment via campaigns of operation in a, uh, in a loop. So we need uh, the current uh, uh, count value in, uh, in the loop. We check that we, uh, we, we can perform this increment, otherwise uh, this release uh, should throw an exception, for example. And only after that, we increment uh, the count by uh, cost operation. And of course, it's less efficient. And if you know that you, uh, you use acquire and release properly, for example, uh, if you are not provided with the, this acquired release, and you, if you have something like uh, synchronized block in Java, but for semaphores uh, in your API, then uh, it's fine to use this uh, uh, fast uh, implementation with the fetching data because uh, you know that uh, you invoke release only when you have this permit. But if you don't have permit invoke release, then you need to uh, add an additional check. Okay, so I believe we, we can move on. Okay, so uh, now we have acquire, we have release, and typically in such data structures, when we have block operation, we have a, uh, we also have an operation that tries to perform this. Uh, uh, attempt attempt to acquire in our case uh, if we don't need to block so we need some, uh, some try acquire operation and uh, let's look uh, at acquire uh, we go suspend only if the count was negative and it, the uh, it means uh, probably that uh, uh, try acquire can be implemented uh, uh, in a simple way. We just uh, uh, read uh, the current permits counter. We check whether there is permit available uh, available right now, so that if the count uh, uh, is zero or negative, there is no permit available. And uh, in this case, we return false, so that this try acquire fails. And otherwise, we try to decrement our permits counter uh, by a campaign swap operation. In this case, we return true. So we, if this count succeeds, then we successfully acquired permit. And let's check whether this implementation works or not. So uh, at the top, we have all our operations, the code of them, and uh, the bottom, uh, uh, on the left, uh, we have the structure of uh, our semaphore, and on the right, we have a scenario. And initially, we create semaphore with one permit, and we acquire this permit uh, so that we uh, have semaphore with zero permits now, and uh, uh, we have two parallel threads. Uh, in the thread on the left, we invoke release, and after that we invoke try acquire followed by acquire. And on the right, we have only acquire operation, and just to remind you, in this acquire operation, we, we at first decrement the number of permits, and after that, if needed, and we will need this in uh, our example, we suspend. So. Let's uh, try to check whether our try acquire implementation is correct, the implementation that simply looks at the count. And uh, first of all, we'll start with the second thread, uh, with this acquire operation, which decrements the number of permits so that the number of permits becomes minus one. After that, it should go suspend, but it is stuck for a while and the, the execution switches to the first thread. And in the first thread, we invoke release. So the permits count was minus one. Now it becomes zero. Since it was minus one, this release knows. Okay, there is uh, a wait on semaphore so that it goes to the waiting queue. 
it's on the left in our structure and uh, it comes to the cell the cell was empty but we do know that there is a concurrent cooperation which should come right now and we can put the permit without any problem so that we put this permit and complete after that we invoke try acquire and when we walk track wire, we simply look at the count, and the count is zero, and it means that there is no permit available in this semaphore. However, we have a permit available in semaphore. It's in the waiting queue. Uh, and when we walk acquire, it uh, decrements uh, the permits counter, it becomes minus one, so that this acquire goes to the waiting queue, it goes to the first cell, and finds uh, the permit uh, put by the release in this cell, so that it completes. And here we see that try acquire fails, while acquire gets permit even without suspension. And we didn't invoke any more release operation. It, it's, uh, in my opinion, inconsistent. And uh, you probably can be fine with the, uh, such an inconsistency in your concrete uh, application uh, because uh, uh, you still can guarantee that it's the most uh, key threads in Semaphore are in the critical section and so, so on. But uh, when you build primitive for, for library, uh, like in Kotlin quarantines, you, you want to avoid such inconsistent behaviors. And moreover, if you have such inconsistency, it's much harder to, to test your algorithm. So that we need to do something with this problem. And uh, the reason why the problem appears is that in release, when we put the permit into the cell performing an elimination, we do know that there is concurrent acquire, and we want to transfer this permit to this concurrent acquire. And in our example, we transfer the permit not to a concurrent, but, uh, but to acquire that happens after our release. And if we forbid such executions, then our implementation will be correct. So that we have to be sure that when we put permit into the cell, uh, we put it for some concurrent operation. So how can we achieve this? Let me remind you about the cell uh, state machine. Uh, first of all, uh, we are in the empty state. And when release comes, it puts its value so that it uh, performs an elimination. And uh, uh, when a suspend comes after that, it grabs the value. And it can be possible here that uh, uh, resume and suspend, they are both in the same thread. However, we can uh, slightly change this uh, state machine. We can introduce two modes, synchronous and asynchronous. In synchronous elimination mode, uh, when we put a value into the empty cell, we complete as before. So we don't need to do anything else. However, if we are in synchronous mode, we want to wait until this value is taken by a concurrent operation. And this way we do know that it is taken by concurrent operation because uh, we know that uh, this operation can't happen after us because we are not uh, finished yet. So that uh, in synchronous mode, uh, when we put a value into the cell, we wait in a spin loop until this value is taken. And uh, in order not to, uh, in order not to, to uh, block, uh, this spin loop is uh, uh, fixed sized, so that we, when this spin loop is finished and the value is not taken, we mark the cell as broken. And in this case, our resumption fails. At the same time, when suspend comes to this cell and it finds the cell broken, it also fails. And the idea is that uh, if, the, if your operation, which invokes suspend or invokes resume, if it sees that this suspend or this resume fails, it should restart the operation from the beginning. 
so that uh, uh, as for API in our uh, suspend and resume functions, resume can fail uh, due to uh, failed elimination, and in this case it returns uh, false, and of course it returns true on success. And uh, suspend can return null instead of future if uh, it finds uh, the next cell broker. And uh, the extension uh, of, uh, of Semaphore with this mode is uh, pretty simple. So we just need to, to wrap our uh, acquired these operations into infinite loops. And uh, when uh, we invoke suspend in acquire, we check that this suspend is successful. And if not, we start the operation from the beginning. And in a release, we check that the resume is successful. If not, we also start the operation from the beginning. And please note that if we, for example, resume fails, so we increment the counter, we go to resume the next cell and we fail. We also do know that there is a concurrent suspend, which also should fail and it decremented the counter. And in uh, this way, we uh, can guarantee that the balance of the counter is managed properly. So we don't do additional decrements and we don't do additional decrements because uh, each acquire, each release, uh, so I would say that on each cell uh, work, uh, works one acquire and one release, so that if acquire fails, release fails. And if release fails, acquire fails. So that the counter is managed properly. So any questions now? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, actually it was more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and could you please uh, return to your uh, scheme with uh, states? This one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what does we mean the marks on the uh, vertexes? What R and S? So here S is suspend, no. uh, R is resume. Okay, okay. So suspend is a part of acquire and resume. Yes, in, in our uh, semaphore implementation, yes, acquire invokes suspend and uh, release in, invokes resume. And could you remind what the value in the... And this value, so of course we can uh, resume with uh, any value this cell and uh, in our semaphore algorithm, uh, we always uh, resume with unit, so this unit uh, uh, represents permit. Uh, we don't need any special value. However, we can use uh, uh, values when we uh, implement not semaphore, but for example, pool, uh, block and pool, so that we manage a set of resources. And in this case, uh, we store values here. Okay, okay. And can you show again the final code before? You mean this one? Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I believe it will be... Oh, all of us will need some time to comprehend it during your future talk, because it's not too fast to, to comprehend it for now. Uh, so, do you want... Do you... Do you have some slides following uh, that uh, show some diagrams how concurrent operations uh, operate uh, on these counters? Uh, it doesn't really matter here because uh, the idea here is simple. When we, uh, for example, in acquire, when we decrement the counter, uh, this counter was either uh, positive or it was zero or negative. So it, if it was positive, that it means that we have a, a, an available permit in this semaphore, we can just grab it and complete, right? Yeah, and okay. if it was negative, or if it was zero, it means that there is no available permit and there are some waiters on this semaphore. And in this case, we go and suspend. So the code looks uh, uh, like sequential code. 
and it works in concurrent environment. And the release performs an opposite thing, so it increments the number of permits and uh, it checks uh, is there number or is, is there, there any weight on this uh, semaphore? So if the count was not negative, it means uh, there is no weight on this semaphore, and we can complete immediately. Otherwise, we need to resume the next weight. So this okay, uh, and resume, resume may fail for somehow. Yes, and here uh, on elimination. When the zoom comes, it can find uh, uh, the cell in the empty state because we first of all manipulate with the permits counter and only after that we invoke these suspend uh, and resume functions. So it, it is possible then uh, that uh, we have semaphore with zero permits, acquire comes, it should uh, uh, go suspend, but uh, it just uh, decremented the number of permits so that it's minus one now and it is stuck for a while and after that release comes it increments the number of permits and uh, it notices that uh, there should be a weight on this semaphore it goes to the first cell and it finds it empty because uh, the acquire from the first thread is stuck and in this case it performs an elimination and uh, here it can fail because we w when we trust this value we uh, we want to be sure that it is taken by concurrent operation and in, in this case we uh, uh, we have is uh, we wait until this value is taken and if it is not taken by a fixed uh, uh, amount of time then we mark the cell as broken and that's how we fail. So we mark as broken, we fail, and uh, uh, the corresponding suspend uh, invocation, uh, which works on, on the same cell, it also fails because it, when it comes, it finds the cell broken. So that here, uh, we see that uh, when we invoke suspend, if the cell is broken, because concurrent release comes, it, it, it tried to perform the elimination, it failed on this. Uh, we need to restart the operation from the beginning. Okay, and we have a question from our attendee. Uh, should we have a spin loop now until suspend release functions are successful? Uh, should we have spin loop until... Uh... Suspend release functions are successful. So I, I believe we we do know. we need a loop? I believe we need it. <laughs> well, maybe Alexander should clarify his question somehow. Okay, I will. I think I see the question. Uh, should we have spin loop on now until suspend or release functions are successful? So here we have this uh, loop. So it's not spin loop because we don't spin, but we, um, we just have this while true loop and we uh, try to perform our acquire or perform our release until uh, uh, it succeeds. Of course, we can fail. We can fail because of uh, this uh, diagram, because we uh, uh, release can uh, come to the cell which is in empty state, and it, uh, it marks the next cell is broken. Uh, and uh, this way, uh, if you're familiar with the progress guarantees, uh, our algorithm is now abstraction free, uh, uh, abstraction free, because it is possible that release the that require comes it decrement the number of permits after that release comes it uh, tries to perform the whole operation it increment the number of permits it goes to the next cell uh tries to perform an elimination and it fails on this it marks the cells broken after that we switch back to the first thread and in the first thread uh suspend goes to this cell and finds it broken and we can replay this as many times as we uh, want and uh, this way our algorithm is uh, abstraction f uh, free however uh if we stop all the threads then uh, uh uh, any operation uh, uh, completes in a bounded number of steps. 
So it's not oh. spin loops, but by spin loop we usually mean that the algorithm is blocking. But here it's not blocking. It's not blocking. We have an abstraction for freedom of blocking guarantee. Okay. Okay. Ah, the question was uh, why we why we need why don't we need a while on a semaphore acquire? But I believe it we shouldn't because the acquire returns the future, and we will uh, use the future await. Yes, exactly. Like While it's on the future, and uh, it means that we uh, we successfully put a request. So we either return future immediate, so that we don't need to wait, or we return future suspended, and it means that we successfully put uh, uh, a request uh, uh, into the cell, and we are waiting until this uh, cell is moved uh, to the state future resumed. Okay, I believe uh, confusion with, with uh, non-standard API that I chose the future, but uh, some other libraries acquire is awaiting uh, call that will hide the waiting inside it. <laughs> ah, okay. So I believe we could move on. Uh, okay. Uh, so now we fixed try acquire and uh, it works uh, pretty well and uh, this algorithm can be used in uh, languages like Go for example uh, when you have uh, Go routines and uh, these Go routines uh, can be cancelled. However, in real life, if it's not Go, if, uh, if you use threads for example, then uh, your operations should be abortable because uh, threads can be interrupted. If you use coroutines, then in uh, quarterly coroutines, uh, cancellation is even a built-in feature so that we have to support it. But this I mean that if you have blocking operation and, uh, uh, and you are waiting for some result, it's naturally to cancel the, this operation because you don't need this result anymore. And we need to support uh, such cancellation somehow. And uh, for this purpose, we modify our future suspended. And uh, now a wait function can return bottom if uh, the operation is cancelled. And it can be cancelled by an addition cancel method. This cancel method uh, can move uh, the state of our future from the waiting state to the cancelled one. So before uh, we have uh, only one tra transition from waiting to resumed, and now we can also perform transition from waiting to cancelled. And uh, of course, all these transitions uh, are atomic. So when we uh, complete the future uh, and it is successfully completed, of course, we can't have transition from resumed to, resumed to cancelled. In this case, cancel should fail and uh, return false. However, if it succeeds, and it returns true, so it means that uh, we moved the state to cancelled. We uh, invoke a special handle cancellation function, and we can uh, add whatever we want into this function. Okay, uh, we will use this. Uh, so let's uh, uh, come back to the uh, cell lifecycle. And uh, in this cell, on the left, we have the elimination part when resume comes before suspend. On the right, we have resumption part. And in the middle, uh, we see the future in the waiting state. And we remember that since we read it uh, cancellation, we have transition not only from waiting to resumed state, we also have transition to cancelled state. And we have to deal with the, this cancelled uh, uh, future somehow. Uh, so first of all, uh, the main thing we should do is to replace this future cancelled with cancelled, similarly to the replacement from future resumed to resumed. Uh, we need these to avoid memory leaks because uh, these futures are typically uh, coroutines or threads or something else. Uh, and uh, it, if you have a, 
uh, and in order to avoid memory leaks, we need to perform this replacement. So that in our future expanded, in this handle cancellation method, uh, we have some code which performs this transition from future cancelled to cancelled. And uh, the main idea uh, of uh, algorithm with the cancellation of our simple cancellation logic is that uh, resume can fail not only because of uh, failed elimination when it uh, moves the state to the block uh, uh, state, uh, but it can also fail if uh, the future is cancelled. So when it comes and it sees that the future, uh, the cell state is either future cancelled or cancelled or cancelled, then this resume attempt fails. Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> before uh, applying this uh, uh, cancellation to our semaphore algorithm, let me uh, focus uh, for a bit on memory leaks. Uh, so we. Uh, we moved our cell state to cancelled to avoid memory leaks, and thus we don't have pointers to these uh, uh, cancelled futures anymore. However, we still store these uh, cancelled cells. I mean, uh, imagine that uh, you have semaphore and you perform one million acquire operations. After that, you cancel all of them, so that all the cells are now uh, in the cancelled state. However, we still store these 1 million cells, but we have no way to add this semaphore and we need 1 million cells for them. That's not okay. It's a memory leak and we need to get rid of such cells somehow. And let me remind you how we simulate uh, our infinite array in the practice. So we have a linked list of segments and when we cancel one cell, we can't do anything. Because we still needed this segment, we need uh, other cells in it, uh, so uh, th there is no way to deal with this. However, if all the cells in uh, the segment are cancelled, we can remove the segment. And uh, since we store IDs of each of the segments, if, this, if some segment is not uh, uh, in the linked list, we know that uh, uh, it happened because all the cells in the segment are in the cancelled state. Okay? And uh, uh, thus we can uh, remove it safely and uh, handle the, uh, uh, the, the, this removed uh, segments in the code uh, like we described. And in order to remove the segment, we need to add uh, pointers to the previous segments. Uh, uh, these are represented with the red arrows on the diagram. And uh, thus we, can, we have now not, uh, uh, we have doubly linked list, not just linked list, so that we can perform this removal in constant time. Of course, we need to do some tricks to organize this uh, removal in concurrent environment, but trust me, it's possible, it's not uh, really complicated. And uh, so we remove segments with the uh, cells, uh, which store uh, only cancelled uh, cell. Uh, we, we remove segments which store only cancelled cells, and thus we avoid memory leaks. And uh, uh, when we have uh, can cancellation, it turns out that our previous implementation, when suspend and uh, and resume can fail, it's already correct with cancellation, because here when resume fails. We restart the operation. And what happens in case of cancellation? So let's imagine that uh, a choir comes, it decremented the counter, and after that it is cancelled. Uh, so after it becomes cancelled, uh, release comes to this cell, it finds the cell in the cancelled state, and before this, before invoking this resume, our release incremented the number of permits. So the cancelled acquire decremented the number of permits and our release attempt incremented the number of permits. And when our resume fails due to uh, cancellation, uh, 
Then we uh, try to work release again. And uh, this uh, release attempt was uh, uh, useful for incrementing the number of permits back. So that, again, when we acquire, we decrement permits, then we cancel it, then we invoke release, it increments the number of permits back, it finds the cell in the empty state, and uh, it uh, tries to perform uh, the, the, the release again because our resume fails. So that uh, our account uh, is uh, uh, balanced properly, and we uh, try to perform release again and try to resume uh, <clears throat> and we will try to resume the next uh, wait, which we hope is not cancelled. So, any questions here? Again, uh, why we can't uh, unneeded waiting in a choir because uh, the, we have a lot of cancels and the release uh, part may be stopped in, in some suspension due to scheduling. Uh, could you please repeat the beginning of the question? Suppose you have a lot of uh, recent cancels okay. and, uh, and release now, release thread with release somehow is suspended. Sure. So we have now uh, an, an unnecessary uh, negative number of permits just because we didn't handle cancel removing, cancel cleanups. Ah, that's a great and question. We are, and we are in a choir and we see the permits are negative and we are going to wait, uh, but actually we will wait for other thread to perform cleanup. Or, we didn't understand the algorithm. Yes, you, you're right. So when we perform a lot of acquires uh, and we cancel on them, for example, we performed 1 million acquires and the counter becomes minus 1 million. And we cancel all of them, but the permits count is still minus 1 million. And in order to update it, we need to invoke release and it will update it incrementally. So it will increment the counter, it try to perform resume, we, it finds that the cell is cancelled and it will increment the counter again and it will do this 1 million times. And until uh, all of this uh, huge work is done, uh, our work uh, our acquire, our, our next acquire should uh, suspend. But anyway, it should, it should, it should suspend to, because th 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 there is no permit available in the semaphore. So it, it doesn't matter for acquire. We, in acquire, we look at uh, the, we, we, it doesn't matter for acquire whether it's one, one minus uh, one million or zero. But uh, uh, the bad thing that is happening here is that uh, in the release, we need to perform this cleanup uh, for all the cancelled uh, waiters. So that uh, uh, here release uh, works in linear time in the number of uh, cancelled acquisitions. So for acquire, it doesn't matter because uh, uh, logically uh, our counter should be zero and zero or minus million doesn't matter. The code we uh, we should go suspend anyway, but for release it matters because uh, it's uh, in intuitive that release operation is slow. Okay, and the other question that you may be address later, I don't know. Uh, why do you need uh, backward uh, links uh, from? for managing segments, uh, don't you rely on uh, somehow garbage collection? You could just move uh, ahead uh, forward. Uh, so <laughs> you can't do this. So uh, suppose we have, uh, we, have uh, we have some acquires, which are stored in the first segment. After that, we uh, 
in work acquired one million times so that uh, they will be stored in the segments in the middle. After that, we cancel all these one million acquires. Yes. And, uh, and this way we need to remove segments from the middle. And there are two ways. When we want to remove segment, if we have a linked list, like here, when we need, want to remove segment one, we should go to head and find this segment in linear time and remove it. And in order not to perform the uh, re removal uh, operation in uh, uh, linear time, in order to perform it in constant time, uh, we need to maintain uh, links to the previous segments so that we can remove it in constant time by... Uh, uh, oh, so you're supporting removing segments in the middle? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay. It was it wasn't uh, obvious. <laughs> so that we, yes, we, we if we need to, to remove some segments from the middle, no problem. Just remove it. It works in constant time. And okay, okay. Uh, uh, for example, in uh, as far as I remember, in uh, uh, in some Java implementations, when you have such linked list uh, and this. Uh, uh, this linked list uh, stores threads. When you need to remove a node, uh, you start from the beginning and f uh, find it node and uh, remove it. Uh, and it works uh, pretty well because uh, uh, it, you don't interrupt threads. Because threads are expensive. And when you design primitive for coroutines, coroutines are extremely cheap and uh, uh, it's okay to cancel them. Probably you cancel, uh, you have more canceled uh, than the completed coroutines in real life. So that your cancellation should be fast. It can't be performed in linear time because you can have much more coroutines uh, than threads and you perform cancellation much more often. That's why we uh, support uh, uh, removals from the, uh, from the middle in our algorithms. Okay, and uh, your base in the loop uh, is uh, working. Your the body of, of the loop is working with permits, so it's like an index. Uh, what you suppose for the state of uh, cells of removed segments? or you don't encounter such a situation? Uh, you mean... Uh... You, you physically remove segments from the list, by your, but your logical index stay intact. Uh, we, uh... Yes, you're right. Uh, and in this case, we do know that if the segment is removed, it is full of cancelled cells. Okay, and so, so it's cancelled by design. Yeah. Yeah, so it's cancelled. So we, we remove segments only if all uh, its cells are cancelled. Otherwise, we keep it. Or if uh, or if it was released from the head, so we just yeah, move sure. head uh, forward. When we, when we move head forward, then uh, if you have garbage collector, that uh, then it will uh, collect this uh, uh, segment. Uh, of, Do you... Of do you somehow handle the overflow of the index? Uh, no, we don't for need to a long living <laughs> program. Uh, we use uh, uh, 64 uh, uh, bit counters, uh, so uh, th th there is no oh, okay, overflow okay. On, on them. Okay. It's just easier for us to use uh, 64 bit counters uh, rather than uh, trying to. Uh, to check for overflowing with the 32 counters. And, and it can be possible to store uh, uh, really a lot of uh, coroutines because they are cheap. Uh, and I guess we, since we have non-volatile memory so that you can have really a lot of memory, it's much safer here to use 64-bit counters because you can, uh, since you have a lot of memory, you can have a lot, a lot of coroutines, and probably 32-bit count that is uh, not enough. Okay. Okay. 
uh, okay uh, so uh, following your question uh, Dmitry, uh, we, we have a problem with the release that uh, it can uh, it, it can work a long time because uh, it needs uh, to uh, it needs to increment the premise count uh, for each of the cancellations. And the question is whether we can improve this or not. It, turn, it turns out that we can do this, but it's extremely tricky. Uh, I will uh, uh, I will try to give you some intuition on how this uh, can be done. And uh, we will continue discussion on this uh, in the discussion zone after that. So, uh, first of all, the straightforward logic which comes uh, um, uh, at first is the following. Instead of uh, incrementing the permits count in resume, the cancellation handler can increment the permits count. So, in this handler cancellation function, in future, we can perform this increment and uh, at the same time, resume should skip the cancelled cells, right? So, uh, let's check whether it works. Uh, we have uh, semaphore with zero permits as before. So, we have semaphore with one permit and we acquire it in the beginning. And uh, uh, we have two threads. On the left, we invoke release, and on the right, we invoke it Y and cancel it. And in this cancellation, we mark the future and the cell as cancelled. And after that, we invoke, we increment the number of permits. Let's check whether it works or not. Oops, sorry. Uh, first of all, we invoke acquire. In this acquire, we decrement the number of permits. It becomes minus one. We uh, uh, store this uh, future into the first cell, uh, and that's all. Uh, after that, we want to cancel this uh, request so that we at first mark the cell as cancelled. And now we switch the execution to release. And here release comes. The counter was minus one, so it becomes zero now. And uh, uh, since release, uh, release should skip uh, cancelled cells, it goes to the next cell. And if we use asynchronous uh, uh, el elimination mode, then we put our permit uh, into the waiting queue. Uh, so that we now have permit into the queue, in the queue. And after that, we switch back to the second thread and we increment the number of permits. And now we have one permit in the counter and one permit in the queue. That's not okay. So we have semaphore with zero permits. We invoke release in one thread and we acquire and cancel this acquisition in another thread. And after that, we have two permits. Magic. But this magic produces incorrect behavior. So now we have two permits. And uh, if we use uh, synchronous uh, uh, elimination, then uh, of course we can't put permit here. In this case, we mark this cell as broken. And after the cell is broken, we retry our release so that uh, uh, we would uh, uh, increment the count again, so it becomes one, and after the increment in uh, cancel, it would become two. So anyway, we have two permits in our semaphore, and that's not okay. And uh, the, 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 the reason why it fails is that uh, uh, when we uh, when we perform cancellation, when we increment the number of permits we probably return the permit back to the uh, semaphore in the counter. So if we return the, by this increment in cancellation, if we return the, the uh, permit back to the counter, then the resume, which should uh, resume us, it should stop on our cell. Because we can think about this uh, the following way. Uh, we have resume, it comes to our cell. It, uh, 
it transfers uh, a permit to us. And after that, we increment the permit counter so that we transfer this uh, permit because we don't need it, we are cancelled, we transfer uh, it to the semaphore directly into the counter. And here, the problem is that uh, we mark uh, the cells cancelled and after that we add an, an additional permit to the semaphore and release and retry the operation so that it uh, also return the permit. So in this case, we return two permits. And uh, uh, that's how we can uh, now forbid such uh, behavior. We, uh, we want to provide some information for, for resume, whether it should be refused by our waiting queue or not. So that when we, uh, so that we, we first of all increment the number of permits and cancellation, and after that we decide whether this cell should be in the cancelled state, or the the, the, uh, the resume which comes to this cell should be refused by our segment queue synchronizer by our waiting queue. Uh, in this case, this resume completes, but special uh, additional function on the value can be invoked. So. Uh, what uh, do we want to do? We want, when we work acquire, uh, we store uh, we store future to the first cell. And if we invoke cancel now, then we will increment uh, the number of permits back to zero. And if we after that invoke release, it's not an interesting case because in this case, release will just increment the count to one and it shouldn't do anything with our waiting queue. So that we switch to release. So release increments the number of permits now. Uh, so it becomes zero. And after that, we switch back to cancel. And here we increment the number of permits again. And in this, uh, here we see that we return the permit back to the semaphore so that uh, we logically already got a permit from the resume on the left. And we should say this somehow to this resume so that we mark uh, the cell as refuse. And when resume comes, it simply stops on the cell. So it knows that uh, uh, it is refused by the synchronizer, it knows that the count is managed properly already, and thus it shouldn't do anything else. So it completes and that's all. Uh, so that uh, in our cell diagram, when we, have few, uh, we, when we are in the future cancelled state, we have two options. We either move to the cancelled state and resume still keeps uh, cancelled cells, or we move to the refuse state and it means that uh, the, so <coughs> the, 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 the resume invocation that comes to this cell is refused by our waiting queue. And, uh, uh, in this case, we invoke special on refuse to resume uh, function. Uh, so if you uh, if you pass some uh, element, some resource, for example, if you build a pool on this, uh, then you want to uh, to manage this resource uh, in order not to lose it. But here. Uh, our resources are permits, they are stored into the count, so, so we don't need to do anything. And uh, when we see uh, that uh, uh, our resume is refused by uh, waiting queue, we simply complete and we don't do anything in on refused resume. We know that the permit is already in the count. And the only problem here is that resume should wait when it uh, in spin loop until the cell is cancelled or refused if it finds it in future cancelled state. Because it, it should be guided. It should know whether it should skip the cell or it should uh, complete and, and involve on refused resume. And in, uh, by default, we uh, have a spin loop here because we know that uh, this information is going to be provided. And uh, another option would be to, uh, to put the value by resume directly into the cell. And in this case, the cancellation handler can complete this resume. Sometimes this logic works, sometimes not. Uh, I don't want to stop here, but it is possible to, uh, to use this uh, uh, 
to this non-blocking way of handling such a situation. And we also have a SEMA for implementation based on this optimization. And we have even a formal proof that our algorithm works correctly. We have a proof in COG. This is a language for writing formal proofs. And we used IRIS framework, which is probably the best framework uh, for reasoning about concurrent programs uh, uh, on COG. So uh, I would suggest to, to stop here now. Uh, and uh, I have a couple of examples uh, uh, with other data st st structures, uh, which uh, I would be happy to discuss in the discussion zone. Uh, and by the way, the last thing is the implementation of this semaphore. Uh, so that you can take a look at the code. And uh, in this implementation, uh, it's uh, the same as before uh, with the asynchronous mode, so on the left. And we, we, if you use this smart cancellation mode, then uh, on cancellation, we need to increment the number of permits and uh, uh, we return true if this cell should be canceled and false if it should be resumed so that we simply check whether we return the permit back to the uh, semaphore or we uh, simply uh, or it stays negative so that we simply removed our cells. So a couple of questions now. Okay. So Thank it's really you. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> I sure hope every... we will have time to discuss this in discussion zone because <laughs> yes, it's, it's hard to understand it from the first side, but it's really interesting. Just to clarify a quick um, one. Uh, uh, your cancel method on the future may return false. Uh, does it mean with but the code should uh, suppose what acquire already happened and it should be manually released. So the pattern, if not, uh, if not cancel, release for a user code. Uh, do you mean if you... That's a good question. Uh... It depends on your code. So uh, it's what do you mean by cancellation? Uh, sometimes when you cancel, uh, so you invoke acquire, you get future, and after that you, uh, you, uh, you cancel in the same thread. And then, uh, of course, if this cancellation fails, you uh, and you still want to be cancelled, you can invoke release to return the permit back to semaphore and to cancel your operation. Uh, and that's how uh, uh, it's gonna work in the Kotlin coroutines. Uh, so it doesn't work right uh, this way right now because the cancellation is kind of atomic. Uh, but it's gonna work this way, yes. Uh, however, if you perform cancellation from another thread and uh, this cancellation fails, you probably don't want to release uh, to, to perform release because it means that uh, parallel acquire is completed. So uh, some uh, uh, code uh, isn't working now. You can't uh, release. So it, uh, the same form will be released later with this code. So it depends on, uh, uh, on your application. Okay, I think we should stop right now, I guess, because we had not so much time till the end of the, of the talk. Um, quick question, how long did it take for you to implement this? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, uh, short would, answer, so, uh, short answer we have. Several months, uh, we spent about four months to implement all of this, and we also spent about uh, four months uh, to prove uh, the semaphore algorithm, and I guess we'll spend uh, four more months uh, to prove uh, the whole abstraction with the different algorithms. Okay, that's a good it's, answer. So, so I okay. hope that everybody will join our Zoom meeting while we are going to the next talk. So, uh, the Zoom meeting is below here, the link to it. So, guys, good luck there. See you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your talk.